Well, Jagmeet Singh came under fire after stories emerged in recent weeks about the NDP leader attending multiple events that endorsed Sikh independence, including one event with an extremist who called for political violence to achieve that state. Yesterday, Singh condemned those responsible for the Air India bombing, but says he will continue to appear at rallies that promote Sikh independence, but that that's so he can share his opinions. He himself has not actually taken a position on a separate Sikh state. How does his soft stance on separatism play in Quebec? Former Bloc leader Gilles Duceppe joins us now. Uh, Monsieur Duceppe, when you're looking at this situation, there were a lot of questions about how Jagmeet Singh would do in Quebec. It's a critical area for the NDP to maintain their seats. Do you think him having this kind of a squishy stance on separatism is advantageous? Well, uh, I think he doesn't help the NDP at all. Uh, not at all, I would say. And I've, if you look at last federal election, they lost a, a lot of seats in Quebec. I think the Jack Layton's effect had uh, disappeared, and uh, Mr. Singh certainly not uh, the man who could transform the situation. And I think, just imagine a second that someone elected in Quebec as a sovereignist is not clear on what was the FLQ. Uh, I mean, it, it is just uh, uh, impossible to imagine such a statement. You have to be clear on that. He is not clear on that. so. Uh, I think it most probably will affect him more in the rest of Canada. But in Quebec, uh, uh, this uh, existing or not, I don't think he, he is in a position to uh, make the NDP uh, uh, better than they it, it were uh, even last federal election. What is the perception of him among sovereignists in Quebec? Well, uh, I don't think people never... Uh, <laughs> I had a, a, a reflection on, on, on that. I think Tom Mulcair was certainly important here in Quebec. He, he was from Quebec. Uh, Singh is not very well known in, in, in Quebec. Uh, and I just can't imagine the NDP coming with uh, a, a, a um, good results in, in the next election. Having said that, uh, all the parties have a problem. The Bloc has a huge problem with Martin Wallet. Uh, Trudeau lost, uh, I think, uh, uh, a lot with the, the trip in India. And Andrew Scheer is not that well known, except that the uh, Tories uh, have a, an important um, base in Quebec City or in, around Quebec City. But having said that, the, the, the books are open. Oh, and speaking of the bloc, of course, you know, a, a party that you know so well, watching that implosion that has happened in recent weeks, uh, what do you think is behind it? And can the party really be resurrected as a force in federal politics? Well, well I think that the bloc has no future at all as long as Martin Wallet stays in place. Not at all. I mean, they, they won't be able to elect uh, even a single member if she stays there. Uh, but we don't know what the seven out of those who, who quit the block, the seven, seven out of ten, is quite important. Uh, will those people form another party if Martin Wallace stays in place? And, and uh, well, when you look at the past, I, I remember in 2003, June 2003, Paul Martin's Liberal were ahead in the poll at 60 percent, the block was at 20 percent. All the political observers said that it was over for the block. A year after, we elected 54 people. But, I mean, we had a, a, a team a st a united, not the situation we are seeing now. So this is why I say they have no future at all as long as she stays there. Uh, just for those in the rest of Canada, why is she so profoundly unpopular in the party? Well, uh, you should ask the uh, people uh, in the party, the seven members who, of the caucus who quit. It was the same thing uh, uh, with the PQ. I mean, she ran twice as the PQ leader, and not a single member of the MNA uh, supported her. So I think she has a problem uh, of uh, being able to lead a party. It is very clear. And instead of working on Quebec's interests and sovereignty, they're just yelling slogans one after the other. They're not working on what sovereignty should be. We used to do that to work in, in the bloc, even with Jacques Parizeau, who was certainly a, a, a strong sovereignist, the least we can say. 
And I remember during the campaign of 2004, I made a, a, a speech, televised speech, with 400 people in the room, including the then ambassador, Canadian ambassador, United States, Raymond Chrétien, on what would be a sovereignty Quebec foreign affair policy. So we were not yelling slogan, but explaining things. They were just yelling slogan one after the other and not really defending Quebec's interest. So with a strategy like that, I mean, uh, she, she's leading the, the blocker right into the wall. Okay, well, Gilles Doucep with his insights into the NDP leader's popularity in Quebec, or lack thereof, and the state of the Bloc Québécois. Thank you so much for your time today, sir. It was a pleasure.